Hi everyone, welcome back to Storytime. My name is Miss Alyssa and today I have a Storytime plan for you that is all about giraffes. We have one, two, and three stories about giraffes to read today. But before we can start our books, we should do our opening song together like we do at the beginning of every story time. So why don't you open up your fingers like this and I will start our song. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clack, clack, clack. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them. Right up to your chin, chin, chin. Now open wide your little mouth, but do not put them in. All right, great job with that song. Now let's start our first book. Let's start with a short book called the jelly bean tree. Jelly bean has long legs, a long tail, and a very long neck. There's jelly bean, our giraffe. Jelly Bean's favorite place is with the trees. She especially loves to nap with them. There she is sleeping. One day, Jelly Bean took a long, long, long nap. When she woke up, she heard something. I hope my nest won't fall, chirped Mama Bird. Jelly Bean stood very still for the rest of the day and the night. The next morning, Jelly Bean's friends came by. What are you doing? asked Dog. I am a tree, said Jelly Bean. See my nest? Oh, said Dog, that's nice. How long will you be a tree? I don't know, said Jelly Bean. I have never been a tree before. As the days passed, Jelly Bean's friends brought her snacks and picked her some flowers. They played, but not too hard. What's in the nest now? Oh, we've got some baby, baby bird eggs. How much longer will you be a tree? Asked Turtle. Jelly Bean wasn't sure. And then, peep, 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 peep. Soon the chicks were hungry, and Mama flew off to find some food. The birds need a different tree now, thought Jelly Bean. Oh, so she's putting them up on a branch. But everyone knew there was no tree better than the Jelly Bean tree. The end. Now we have another counting rhyme to do together on the magnet board. Before we start counting, what have I already put up on our board? What is this? It's a bathtub. And what is this? It's a giraffe, a little giraffe in our bathtub. How many giraffes? Just the one. So can you hold up your one finger 
and I will start our song. One giraffe in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. Now we have how many giraffes? Two. Two giraffes in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. And how many now? Three. That's right, three. Three giraffes in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. And how many now? Four. Four giraffes in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash, come on in. And five. That's right, five. Five giraffes in the bathtub going for a swim. Knock, knock, splash, splash. They all fell in. Oop, through the tumble down into our bathtub. All right. Great job with that counting rhyme. We had five little giraffes. And what colors were our giraffes? Let's go over the colors real quick. What color is this one? Orange. And this little guy? Green. Yellow. Blue. And finally, pink. Those are our five little giraffes all in the bathtub going for a swim. Must be a pretty big bathtub. So let's move on to our next story. Next we have a pretty silly story called I Am Not a Chair. So let's see what happens to our giraffe in this book. On giraffe's first day in the jungle, he felt something wasn't right. Can I share that chair? asked Rabbit. Chair? thought Giraffe. I am not a chair. Giraffe knew he needed to clear things up right away. But he couldn't get the words out. I'm a giraffe, can't they see? I have spots and ears and eyes and whatever these things are. If they couldn't see the difference, giraffe would have to show them. Snap, twist, twist, clank, clunk. What do you think he's gonna make? Now that's a chair. Looks nothing like me. Hmm. New friends were already headed his way. Problem solved. Mm. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Smash. Oh no, my chair, says the hippo. I'll fix it. This goes here, that goes there. <sighs> Giraffe's first day could not get any worse. But at least no one could sit on him now. Flap, 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 flap. Uh-oh. Now the birds are using him as a chair. He does not look very amused. While Giraffe looked for a solution, someone was spying on him. A human! Surely he'll know what I am. Look at those spots! It's perfect! Uh oh. Ah! Mm. Oh, not again! Smartest species, yeah, right. Enough. I am not a chair. 
and I am speaking up to the next animal I see. Roar. The next animal I see will be my dinner. Even if I have to sit here all night. Now the lion is using him as a chair. Mm, should he tell the lion? Giraffe wished he could run. He wished he could hide. He wished he wasn't so afraid. No, I need to speak up. I need to be me. And Giraffe couldn't hold it any longer. I've got to pee. Okay, here goes nothing. <clears throat> Excuse me, lion. Hmm. Uh oh. Ah! Run for your lives! It's a talking chair! I am not a chair. I'm a giraffe. And the next day, he told everyone. And everything finally felt right. Oh, so he told all his friends what happened to him. Me, a chair. Can you believe it? The end. Now let's read Giraffes Can't Dance, uh, which is a book many of you may have read before, but it's always good to reread. Ready? Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel. And eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before. So sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald earlier on, but sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. 
With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. That's pretty amazing. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was open wide. I am dancing. Yes, I'm dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then, one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. The end. That was our last book for story time today. Thank you for listening to all of our different stories. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did like the giraffe books, you could come in the library or make a curbside appointment to pick up our craft of the week, which has some giraffe crafts that go well with our stories. So if you come into the library and pick up your baggie, you will find two simple crafts. The first one is just a coloring page like this. So it looks a little bit like a baby giraffe, maybe a bit like Jelly Bean, our giraffe from the first story. What color was Jelly Bean? She was blue. Uh, but this giraffe is missing something important. It doesn't have any spots or polka dots like giraffes sometimes have, a pattern on their, on their skin. So you will get some stickers, some little circle stickers that you can put all over your giraffe so that they will have their polka dots. So all you have to do is color, 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 and then put your stickers on there and you're good to go. That's one easy craft. The second little craft that will be in the same bag will look a little bit like this. So this is our second little giraffe. Again, you just have to color. You wanna color the body of the giraffe and color one, two legs. And then you will need to get a little bit of glue because you want to glue each leg to a clothespin, a little clip like this. You glue it to one side of the clothespin and then you clamp that on the bottom of your giraffe to act like legs. So it should stand up by itself. And this is what it looks like on the back. Those are the little clothespin legs. And here's the front. So you'll just need to color and glue this one and then you'll have both of your crafts done. So I hope you enjoy your giraffe crafts. I will see you at the next story time. Bye.